launches with a uh, sealed population. Hello, hello. How's everybody doing out there? Uh, YDBT Daily, YDBT Daily coming at you guys on another uh, Thursday, March 28th, 2024. We're back talking a little uh, smack, not slow news day, but today I wanted to talk about a little bit uh, on regulation front. I was watching uh, a podcast. When I work, I just kind of listen to podcasts um, in the background just to kind of pass the day. I either listen to Modern Marvels. Believe it or not, YouTube is a wonderful tool to watch old shows you used to love. And Modern Marvels on the History Channel was something I would watch all the time. You'd watch the most deadly submarines, the baddest helicopters ever, the biggest air, you know, uh, 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 what do you call them? Carrier ships, you know, how they work and, you know... Me- it's just great. But on the background today, I had the Lex Friedman podcast, which I'm not a huge fan of, but he did have Elon Musk on and I just listened to it. I, I didn't find anything in particular very engaging except the part where he talked about regulations. Obviously, he's a car manufacturer with Tesla and obviously he uh, sh- shoots rockets up in space to get Starlink and, and other and stuff to the um, International Space Station via Dragon to get them resupplied or whatever. And he talked about some of the regulations that are thwarting his efforts to go forward. So I thought to myself, I wonder what the automotive manufacturers would or what the cars would be like if government wasn't it so intrusive. So my question for you guys today is what regulations have hurt the ability For us to enjoy vehicles, obviously a lot of you are going to say cafe standards and you would probably be correct. So we can delve into that. But I want to play a snippet after saying hi to the sponsors and the people here of what Elon Musk had to do to get the regulators to approve him launching rockets out of California. We'll do that and more and talk, you know, with the the people out there, but not before Mr. Bill O'Reilly says hello to the people. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll do it live. Fuck it. Do it live. I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live. Right. Fucking thing sucks. You know, he's right. p mass Nick James, I got a p mass I ordered a p mass cold air intake. Not the D-Mass, the p mass for the 13 GT. Already started accumulating parts to get some of that stuff going. Nick James, the P-Mass. Didn't have performance. I bought a set of ET Street SS's 285. 3519 for the stock Brembo wheels because I want to keep the car looking pretty stock, but I want a little more grip so I don't have to worry about wheel spin when data logging. Dean have performance got them to me two days. Quack on parkrun.com. Gonna get some used parts so I can get the car looking decent. I need a seat. I need a deck lid. Maybe a couple other odds and ends to make this car pop nicely. I want it to be pretty kosher so that when it comes time to sell the sucker in about a year or two, it doesn't need anything. Calumet Transmission, Calumet Transmission.com, Calumet Transmission, it's right trade in his 24 Mustang. We are talking today, he's like, bro, this 24 Mustang fucking sucks. He's probably going to get a 19 to 20, 350. Back wheel, it's Caleb backward. He's in Miami. If you'll sell drugs and have an R8, that's the wheel to get. Bellac Industry, two auto solution, Robbie's on auto solution, and MFP. Oh my God, I'm out of breath. Fuck, bro. You know how difficult it is to kind of do this without really any... Uh, anyone else just to kind of keep everything going it's not easy let's say hi to the people we'll talk about what regulations hurt the automotive industry the most we all know it's probably cafe standards but things some regulators add things in there that actually help like seat belts and stuff like that but some of the design and safety features make the cars look absolutely ugly a pillars and stuff like that but we can talk about that later on d-rock fox i'm hong solo b lavesh leon phelps hoodie travis money 540 b lavesh tiller gto bryson witt dixon 2000 mcr joe switch greg walls Bill at Noonan himself, Joe Swiss, Jared Wells, The Wolf, 5.0, John Jones, Maki Mark, ACFU Grad, Teach, Scorsky, El Patron de la Cerveza, Maki Mark, Cayo Bravo, Stuart D, Dane Austin, Tango, Speed Freak, Johnny Boy, Corn Fred Cow, Michael Locks, Mini by Bad Man, Great Escape 1350, Mini by Bad Man. I'm kind of still waking up. I took a bit of a nap before this because I, was, I, I came back from the gym and I'm just like zonked. So I needed about an hour and a half to reset. I think I'm going to be up all night. Mini bag, if it's not chopping like a motherfucker, Nate, we're shit. Click pop the horse, Broxy Luxury, Nardi, Mercado, Great Escape 1350, Phil Fez, Asian, Asian? What's it say here? Wait a minute. What's it say? I've got to go up. Asian 8806. <laughs> No, 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 Alex. It's ASEAN. Uh, Elver Galarga. El Verga Larga. <clears throat> Ray Ray Elver. Nardi Mercado. Leo Rodriguez. Big Jake. Cayo Bravo. 
Uh, Leo Rodriguez again, Easy R, Holly Tokwache Mo, Justin, My Justin Michael, D Rock Fox, Whipple, Whipple 5 0, Cabo says the dog, Cabo the dog says, yo, yo, Vegas 5 0, Mr. M3 and 15 GT with the plasma man. Uh, Shamar, Chris, Cobb, Patina Performance, T Nelson, if it's not Chopin Tonka, Date Jacob, Oscar Hernandez, let's go all the way to the bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Colorado, 16. Besides the EPA stuff, I don't see how the government has affected anything, to be honest. We're living in great times. Look no further than the Grey Goose. You think the government is allowing the Grey Goose to happen? <laughs> I'll stop. Uh, Ken's Cow... <laughs> Oh, fuck, what a name. Anthony McGinnis and Tonka and Capcom Damien. <laughs> Damien, say what's up, Theo, Ian Oz, and GG. I'm going to play you a sound clip that maybe some of you that did watch that podcast might have missed. So because Elon Musk has to deal with a lot of regulations and he's launching rockets in space, a lot of the people like the FAA, the Fish and, Fish and Wildlife, all these people try to put their tentacles into something just to be cocksuckers. There's really no reason for them to have input on furthering humanity. Dude, let him launch rockets. Let him do whatever the fuck he needs to do. Starlink is a wonderful product. He, You should see what's happening with the Starship program. If Look, I don't even understand you people if you're not waiting to Starship. Like, I don't understand how you don't care about that. Like, if you care about no prep drag racing, but you don't care about Starship, this channel might not be for you. So I'm going to play you a sound clip of something he had to do in order to gain um, a, a launch license, he talks about how the seal population, when he was launching out of the West Coast, was <clears throat> being studied to be affected by the sonic booms from the rockets taking off and landing. Again, SpaceX lands their rockets either on barges or on land. So on the way in, those things break the sound barrier, make a crazy sound, and some idiots were like, what about the seals? He's like, excuse me? Yeah, what about the seals? How are they affected by the sonic booms? So, again, guys, you're probably going to be the only ones that watch this live because I believe they're going to copyright the next clip I'm going to put up there. And all I do is mute it so that I can still get paid. But listen and listen closely to what Elon Musk had to do in order to get launch license approval of on the West Coast because of the seal population. Mm -hmm. um, nonetheless, we were forced to kidnap a seal, strap it to a board, put it headphones on the seal, and play sonic boom sounds to it to see if it would be distressed. This is an actual thing that happened. This is actually real. I have pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the seal. <laughs> Elon Musk, in order to gain approval to launch from the west coast people that were worried about how the seals would be distressed by sonic booms told him to capture a seal <laughs> look at it strapped it down to a board and play sonic boom sounds to it i would they love to see this yeah there's, i mean a, oh, sorry there's a seal? a seal with headphones <laughs> yes it's a seal with headphones yeah. strapped to a board and and like the okay now the amazing part is how calm the seal was <laughs> yeah because if i was a seal i'd be like this is the end <laughs> they're definitely gonna eat me yeah. um how will the seal when the seal goes back to other you know it's seal friends how's he gonna explain that they're never gonna believe him never gonna believe him and that's why i'm like well you know it's sort of like it's like getting kidnapped by aliens and getting an anal probe you know <laughs> You come back and say, I swear to God, yeah. I got kidnapped by aliens and they stuck an anal probe in my butt. And you're like, no, they didn't. Exactly. So the, uh, <laughs> I don't know why that clip made me laugh so hard, but this is a microcosm or an example of how intrusive the government is. Now, cafe standards are the ones that really get me. So the cafe standards introduced after the, uh, let's just say the Saudi Arabians jacked up with jacked with the oil in the 70s a lot of you a lot of you younger guys don't even know that there was an oil crisis in the 70s and that's what spurred on some of the you know 
mile per gallon standards. Again, we're talking about cars that were rocking and rolling in the 70s with big blocks and all this stuff. And then the oil crisis happened. And then the U.S. said, "Uh oh, we have to institute some standards to be less dependent on foreign oil. Unbeknownst to the people making the laws, apparently oil just keeps coming out of the ground. It just somehow magically fills up some of the pockets that were previously dried up. Some of the uh, wells that thought to be dry somehow ended up with oil on, you know, refilled. Crazy how it refills by some weird, I don't know, nuclear process and filtering through the mantle. How quote unquote fossil fuel pockets keep filling up. And that's the big myth, the big lie. If you need to regulate based on unproven theories and then you pass that down to the consumer via cafe standards because let's be honest cars should not be costing seventy thousand dollars for let's just say um let's just say a fifty thousand dollar accord shouldn't be a thing even with inflation all they do is pass down the tariffs pass down all of the regulatory expenditures to the customer that's just how it works so cafe standards to me are the biggest one because now with the advent of electric cars you're going to start seeing the regulations kind of bend towards what they want you to push. But when in actuality, it that damages, I would say, the mining is as harmful as oil drilling. If you're going to go ahead and ramp up the lithium production, the cobalt production, the aluminum production, all of the things that you need to make a, a, an electric battery, I think eventually you're going to find out that it's as harmful as drilling for oil or not, not so much fracking, but drilling for oil. So I thought to myself, I said, self, what, were car, what would cars look like nowadays or how would they perform if the government was less intrusive? Well, number one, gasoline would be cheaper because the reason gasoline is high is they heavily regulate it. Before, it was nothing. And all of a sudden, because of the CAFE standards and, and the Clean Air Act, which, again, we all know is a money grab. How does the earth know that you are paying taxes on something and magically cures itself? And last time I checked, trees love carbon dioxide. But when you were young in school, they, they, they pounded into your brain that a greenhouse effect is bad. And I was one of those very logical children that I went, wait a minute, I've been inside a greenhouse. It's lush. All the plants in there grow well. Actually, it's a... It's a um, let's just say, favorable environment for plant growth. <laughs> so how is greenhouse effect a negative? Like people don't think when they use words. But anyway, what do you guys think has been some of the worst regulations in history that have thwarted or have made car manufacturers spend so much money on something that probably wasn't necessary? To me, obviously, emission stuff is absolute horseshit. The, the amount of uh, materials that have to go into making a catalytic converter Guys, do you know what with materials in a catalytic converter and, and, and to mine them and to actually produce them, how expensive of a process that is? And at the end of the day, the emissions get out. They get out. It's just a matter of slowly or at one time when the cat decides to blow up when you put a whipple on it and totally make a hundred horsepower and don't report to anybody in your audience that the cats blew up on it and you cut them off on your carbed EO kit unreal some of the bullshit that happens out there i wish i could say more i wish i wasn't in the industry i wish i wasn't tied down because i kind of have to keep a job in this industry but i'm telling you the amount of bullshit and shenanigans that happened out there you guys would be blown away and you still buy the stuff like you guys still buy the stuff based on what the manufacturer says when all you have to do is do a little bit of critical thinking and you know it's 100% bullshit. Let's get to the paid questions and we'll get to talking shit with the guys here. 313 Mike says, what about the Lizzo's? I know this clip. It's literally insane. So he was okay. Chat, match or beat my $5 donation if you are gay and you love the EPA the way Meek Mill loves Diddy. Oh, wow. Oh, fuck. Fuck my shit. You know what it gets me about that clip? It's the way he says the N-word the second time. The way he says the N-word the second time sounds Philly, doesn't it? That one. Uh, he extends the A. The familiar N-word. Not the derogatory N-word. The familiar. The hey, the hey buddy N-word. I'll see that and raise you five, Justin. Uh, thank you so much for the money. Dixon gave me uh, nine, uh, $10. Each vehicle manufactured separately... 
all their vehicles have to average a certain amount of miles per gallon correct. This is how Tree Huggers screwed over Cali. Can't clean up the forest floor because some of the bugs or whatever. Now we have wildfires like crazy every year. The other thing that happened in California, did you hear about this? It is rumored that if you have an SCTX4 in California, and let's just say you went through the, the resets, I believe every SCTX4, you can marry and unmarry it five times. So let's say you have five vehicles or three vehicles, right? And in those three vehicles, you go back and forth, marry, unmarry, marry, unmarry, blah, 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 and then all of a sudden you're out of unmarries. Or you buy an X4 that has been used on four previous vehicles, you hit up SCT and you go, hi, SCT, I would like an unlock for my SCT X4. Okay, where are you located? California. Oh, you live in California? Sorry. Oh, uh, what? Sorry, we can't reset your engage. I'm sorry, your um SCTX4 in California because we have a deal with them that tells us that tells them that we cannot reset it anymore. Sorry. So you know how many people have this software that can reset X4s and X3s non-stop? This hacked software that people have that they can just reset these X4s and X3s for a hundred bucks here and there. Those guys are gonna start making money in California. Make something illegal and watch the industry get around it and the black market makes money on it. What Justin Michael said, but nine ninety nine, I match the EPA, says five bucks. I remember when gas was seventy five cents a gallon. See you looking for shoes. <laughs> I am not, I am not mentioning that name. That, that, that boy, that boy better be quiet, please. I'd say safety standards, making vehicles bigger and heavier. It's hard to make a smaller, efficient engine when it's hella heavy. Look at F1. F1, while highly regulated, they have to have a, an engine that makes, what, over a thousand horsepower on the same tank of fuel it has to do the whole race. Like there is no refueling on Formula One. As far as I remember, maybe they changed it, but I know that because of the fuel they run and the way the fueling process was, it was very difficult to do a pit stop and then have a car just catch on fire. They had so many issues, so they, st they stopped refueling. Now they might've changed that. So I'm not an F1 fan because I don't like looking at 120 pound guys run run a course. You know, it's it's a manufacturer's race, really. Red Bull seems to have everything unlocked right now. So they have crazy innovation. They have uh, hybrid systems. They have crazy arrow. They have adjustable arrow. They have super high revs, twin turbo. Depending on the regulations that F uh, the, the F1 uh, um, stewards want to put on them, they get around them. But they have crazy innovation. And I would go, why isn't that, why isn't hybrid technology more of a thing on, on road going vehicles? And I'm not talking about the, the power boost and stuff like that. I'm talking about for performance, Billy badass stuff. No, we're stuck with either full electric, a hybrid hodgepodge uh, abortion of a, of a hybrid system. I don't know of any semi affordable car, say under $100,000, that has a robust hybrid system that is stupid badass that works really well unless it's an exotic and, and i'm like it's because of the regulations and the price for everything it's crazy stuff i work at a favorite automaker we only have to build six engines an hour to break even we build 80 to 90 an hour i'm halfway on mile per gallon uh, regulations and it's nice having an na 1.8 liter honda that makes more power than a 74 liter engine from the 70s what impacted the industry the most were cafe and safety safety tech standards. The former is the reason why the small hiccup small pickup died, why the midsize sedan is dying, and why crossovers are so common. I'm hearing rumors and very small rumors. They're listening to get some of roads right They're listening to sonic booms. I'm hearing rumors of an Impala SS coming out, but honestly, I think that is crazy. If Chevy, because let's be honest here. If you want to do a bird's eye view, forget that GM was bought out by the American, you know, the American government, bailed out and basically saved from collapse. Just look at if you want options. Actually, Camaro is dead, so they took that option away. But if you were to decompile and look back and and, and see what the options are for, and I'm talking all of GM, not just Chevy, is the ATSV dead? Meaning twin turbo 
six cylinder, all wheel drive, um, CTV, CTS, whatever, CT, whatever they call it now. Like, they have a Escalade V. They have a, the only, look, a V8 SUV is highly desirable. I know Ford makes a twin turbo equal. I own a V8 Escalade, and it is wonderful to have that power and package in that body so that you can be big toe comfort and power like it is a powerful truck for what it is so if you want a v8 suv got to be a chevy or a durango but we don't want it to get stolen by you know pookie so if you want a v8 sedan chevy but via the cadillac and i believe they also have the ct4 v blackwing according to eddie howard so they have the sedan twin turbo variant they have a v8 supercharged variant and a stick shift version of that cadillac blackwing they have the corvettes gay as they are you're gonna start seeing people pick up on that car did you know that like people like ets if, if i'm not mistaken and i don't want to speak out of turn because you know i don't want them hitting me up and saying you're full of shit i think they're starting to dabble in the ca corvette and you can call it gay all you want. If there's money to be made in a platform, the C8 Corvette is probably going to be the next, let's say, platform that people go after. DCT, rear engine. If you make the trans robust, axles robust, and that motor live, you're a twin turbo kit away and some pretty snazzy tuning from having a badass American rear engine rear drive vehicle just get after it if people start supporting it gtr is dying if you saw what what, I, what we saw at world cup i'm sorry world cup uh tx2k and i get i get it if you don't think that's cool whatever that is a street car event if you want to call it that everyone is shifting away from the gtr stuff and you could tell that the customer base has moved away from the gtr stuff and they're going to the r8s they're going to the v10 stuff they're they're it is very obvious that the r8 or the v10 lambo uh, platform seems to be the most favorable thing but the entry the, the 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 cost of entry into that platform is six figures so the C8 makes sense. So if you want to look at an America, any manufacturer that has V8s being supported right now, it's not Ford. Ford's 24 Mustang is a dud. People are out there trying to make it not a dud because they need to sell parts. Understand that. People that know, they, they, they see people trying to desperately say it's not a dud just to sell blower kits. Let's be honest. But the tuners look back and go, if it ain't tunable, it doesn't matter. And you and I both know the moment it becomes tunable, you know Lund is going to be on top of that. And you know, just like every other Coyote platform, Lund is going to be the best at it because we're the best at it now. And it's a 10R Coyote. So we can take some of the stuff that we already know and move that over. And so what we have done is invested heavily in the previous platform, especially Jake. Wait till Jake. I hope what Jake is working on works out because he's working on something so badass, I think so, that if it works out along with Junior, I think it's going to revolutionize Gen 3s. I know. What is the biggest issue with Gen 3s? The 10R80. It's the 10R80. The 10R80, you you, you got to go build 10R80, and if you make over 1,300, 1,400 horsepower, you're going to smoke that bitch, regardless if it's Super Billy Badass built or not, and if you race it often. And if you can, if you want to go racing, racing, then you got to step down to a t Turbo 400. And then you lose overdrive, you lose a lot of the nannies, a lot of the OEM features. So the stuff that's being worked out right now, I think can be awesome if it all pans out and it'll be the new thing for Gen 3s. And Gen 3s will then be at the forefront. I've always said Gen 2, Gen 2, Gen 2. But the moment Gen 3s start getting some of the sauce that Gen 2s used to, I think you're going to see a huge shift into what the people are buying because some people just go right to a 400 because the 10 already gets smoked. If everything works out, I think it'll be a uh, highly favorable thing that comes out. Um, <clears throat> Lingenfelter has a supercharged Corvette E right now, rating at dyno numbers. CT5 Blackwing is what I have, 668 horsepower. Look at that. Ford doesn't have that. As a grown-ass man, do I want a V8 sedan? 
Yes, I have a VH. Look, I'm looking at this Cadillac and it is easily upgradable. I'm saying I'm a blower cam and exhaust kit away from doing dumb shit, but I don't want to do that. I just want to drive it and not worry about anything. I know the uh, cylinder delete or the DOD or whatever the fuck they call it, the displacement on demand, eventually it's going to go out. So I have to put a cam in it, delete the actual system and delete it in the tune. If I got to do that anyway, while I'm in there, why not sauce it up a little bit? Eh, uh, we'll see. Hey, Alex, my buddy's having an issue with the car starting after first upload tune and take an E only. Are you guys open tomorrow so he can email? Why wouldn't we be open tomorrow? What's tomorrow? It's tomorrow like a special holiday? Let me see. Is, what's tomorrow? Yeah, of course we're open tomorrow. Why wouldn't we be open tomorrow? Um, no, uh, similar, but you'll see what happens. Uh, understandable, Fred. Twin Turbo Huracans are beyond crazy. Uh, yeah, so you're starting to see that the C8, it is locked by Tremec. But you're going to see, Justin Michael, that people are dabbling in that platform. And I'm talking about like the ETSs of the world. They, they just go standalone. There is no factory. A lot of those places that cater to a higher end clientele, they don't stick with stock stuff. They'll just go right to fuel tech or MoTeC and, and handle it that way. Street Alpha says, saw the Mustang GTD yesterday at the auto show. Oh, bro, you are not. You are going to find out that this chat is not a fan. And I'm going to tell you why, Street Alpha Podcast, because you learned a lot, right? I hope you learned a lot when we talked. The GTD is not a Ford vehicle. The GTD is made by Multimatic, the same people that make the Ford GT. The Ford GT, the only Ford parts in that motherfucker is the motor. That's it. Everything else is built and designed by Multimatic. The GTD has a GT500 motor, GT500 DCT. Everything else is designed by Multimatic. So it is as much Ford as a Ford GT is Ford. I don't consider a new Ford GT Ford. That is race car shit. The GTD is not Ford. Sorry, Ford put their little, hey, here's our engine and private label, the bitch. But when I look at that car, I don't go, oh my God, a Ford. No, not at all. I don't have a 10R80, but a situation like the 6R Lie that Lund has on Grey Goose would be something similar to achieve with the 10R80. So a lot of people that saw the Grey Goose don't really understand what the Grey Goose has. Grey Goose has a 6R80 launching in second with a three-speed hub. So, it's, so, it, so it shifts once so for our 200 hub launches in second cuts a low one one goes out the back over 210 miles an hour one shift at under 50 pounds of boost 665 ish okay understand how ridiculous that is it's launch in second i mean you got to make it all work think about what you got to do to make it all work the gear ratio the bump the stall, and it has drive-by wire. It has 100% drive-by wire. Ah, interesting. Yes, exactly. I think Street Alpha Podcast is probably going to have so much knowledge in his brain when it comes to all these different platforms that it's he's going to be a hub. And Street Alpha, you should use that to your advantage. You should use the fact that you have all this information. You can compile it somewhere. And you can have a, let's just say a, an encyclopedia of do's and not, not do's. And you can make videos that can probably, you know, kind of, again, the people you have to deal with have to be credible. By the way, that's the, the clip that you put up there of a Nissan tuner saying that people that say copy paste is stupid because they don't know what they're talking about. He is a hundred percent on the money. If Ford, Chevy, Nissan and Dodge all build their vehicles to the same spec. And you as a tuner have tuned a thousand of, you know, these vehicles with slightly different platforms. One with a JLT, one with a PMAS, one with an Air Raid, one with LU-47s, one that what All you need to do is copy paste your base, shifts, cold start, crank fuel, spark curves, all that stuff, and change the math, injector, and fuel type and paste everything onto an existing file. The people that say that you need to dyno tune your car to get the best tune, 
have no idea what the fuck they're talking about. That Nissan Tuner is exactly on the money. If if there are 500 Mustangs built, they're all built to the same spec in the same year. A 2018 Mustang, 500 of them all built to the same spec. Let's say all of them have JLT intakes. All of them have LU47s. All of them have a pump gas tune. They all get the same fucking tune. There's no reason to, va- you, what you do is you give them the same tune and have them data log it. And the variable would be the manufacturing process of the JLT intake. And if that's off two or 3%, you adjust that. But the main file they get should be the same. Should be the same. Exactly. I love it. Street Alpha, now you know that guy's legit. Not because I verify, but because he has the same thought process. So kudos to him and shout out to him. Street Alpha Podcast, can you interview Turvey? Oh my God, if he interviews Turvey. Hi, how you guys doing? This is Street Alpha Podcast. We're here with Turvey. Wait, <laughs> do I have the Turvey? Si- I- Did I get rid of Turvey? Oh, the WWE would um, get rid of my, yeah, they would, oh, here it is. No, they, the WWE actually copyrighted all of the stuff. It was the um, Steve Steve Austin intro. Hi, we're here with Turvey. Uh, what are you going to, tell us about your garage. Well, you know, I used to have a top on this thing, but then a hurricane came through. But it's no big deal because I'm working towards, you know, having a robust business where everything gets a 352 and, you know, NASCAR style suspension and you could daily drive it. Uh, remember he put five spacers back to back to back just to have the right offset on his fucking wheels. What happened to Turvey? He just, he died. Dino Tuner, nothing. God bless, Haas. But my car is special. Alex, hello. Late again. I laugh so hard when people say Lund is a copy-based tuner. Yes. There's like some chick on Instagram that's like, oh my God, he's just hiding behind the... I'm like... So then I... What I do is I look up who's talking shit, see what's going on, and I go, oh. There's no reason to reply because this is the reason... This is the reason you should... You got to know how to pick your battles, right? If I was going to accept someone's um you know they all say the same thing everyone says oh yeah why don't you pull up and race me like that fucking like like, like that fucking proves anything why don't you pull up and race me well the issue the issue is this if i beat you i want to be ha- i want to be able to say i kicked your ass like you know i beat your ass because there is no upside for me right there's no upside for me to race a non-playable character if an npc said hey alex and keeps tagging me and tagging me and tagging me you would pull up you're always scared you live in riviera not west palm i'm sorry i say west palm as a normal area general area but because i live in riviera that's a bad thing i'm like i'm literally a stone throws away from palm beach gardens i'm not at popeye's chicken in metro pcs i am literally right up against palm beach gardens and then i looked at their profile and i go oh, they have no ass to kick like if you had an ass i can then say i kicked your ass but then i said there is no ass to kick here literally no ass to kick so i was like eh, let it go but those people that say copy paste copy paste your tuner copy paste the copy paste tune unbelievable um, Turvey got more hours at work. Uh, sorry, uh, Street Alpha Podcast likes it. Bro, if you knew the Turvey saga, Street Alpha Podcast, that would be the most interesting Street Alpha Podcast. How, how do the kids say it? No cap. Um, <laughs> if you interviewed Turvey, it would be the best Street Alpha Podcast in fucking history. You don't understand. <laughs> Does he have any updates? Uh, Turu Vituru Viate. Does he have any updates? Let me see. Yeah, here we go. Not too shabby for an amateur. Oh, wow. Oh my God, wait. Street Alpha. I'm telling you, if you interviewed this cat, this guy is a self-proclaimed, like, car builder. How's it going, everyone? Uh, I know it's been quite a while since I've made a video. And I got something hopefully y'all might enjoy today. Uh, it's a lot longer than usual, but it's got some good stuff in it. Yeah. It- so any- anyway, oh. anyway, <laughs> look at his little just dummy finger. So he builds cars for a living. Oh, he wants to build cars for a living, Street Alpha Podcast. You need to get down to Louisiana ASAP, son. Okay, so this is a rough cut of my interior. <laughs> I have half of my cage done. I got to do my front half. So- Before you say he's joking, actually, you know what? He might be a fucking genius. 
<laughs> I think he's being serious. So it's gonna come around and it's gonna have the uh, two horizontal door bars and then from the top of the A pillar down to the bottom of the A pillar at like an angle. And it's so one down the windshield and then one at an angle right there. And then NASCAR shit. You don't know what you you ain't even know. Wait, you ain't even know two parallel bars across the bottom of the door with the bracing. Oh, but the back. <laughs> Shit, I miss you, Terry. Baby, come back. Section is finished. You yes, can blame me all on me. Actually, the welds I was on wrong. This front and I can't live without the only you. The ones. The rest of them are. Baby, come back. Reasonably. Uh, decent. Oh my lord. Street Alpha Podcast. Get on that shit. We need Turvy on your fucking channel. It will be and treat him serious. Treat him. As a fucking straight ass cat. No, you did. You didn't see the outside, bro. You didn't see the outside. I'm sorry, Street Alpha. I'm I'm teasing you. I'm I'm edging you here. But check this out. I'll show you the outside. But they're strong enough to hold, for sure. And then um, I oh. had to check out the fucking wheels. He would come on this chat and tell us how we're wrong about everything with Mustang center caps. <laughs> call it a day. And uh, at some point, I look at the fucking lug nuts, dude. That's one of those that were not straight through. You know the McGuard lug nuts that that are open. He drilled it. <laughs> I'd actually like to put a fifty. Look at the. <laughs> I'm dying. He has a snake fucking pinky ring. An inch Willwood kit, and I know it'd fit with a twenty inch rim up front, but. I have to think about 18 inch rims as well. This is Oh why my lord. Oh. I'm going to upgrade to a TIG welder. Ah! Because I found Yeah, your welder's the problem. The the welding machine <laughs> is the problem. Now that these Careful, you're going to get you're going to get tetanus. Cinders are like 40 thousandths thick. And so I don't know if I want to weld it or if I want to JB weld it. Wow. I'm telling you, Street Alpha, you're going to go, so tell me, how the fuck did you come up with that concept? I'd love for you to treat him seriously. It'd be so fucking awesome. I'm telling you, you'd be, you, you'd, you'd be my hero if you interviewed him in a serious way. Yeah, bro, Turvy is no joke. When we see Turuviate Racing show up on the chat, matter of fact, if you say it three times, Turvy, Turvy, Turvy. It has been rumored that he just shows up. He's hanging out with Diddy for sure. He's absolutely hanging out with Diddy. Oh, shit. The cheek slapping. Even Sam the Polisher. <laughs> so we make fun of Sam the Polisher. We like him. We think he's a, he's a, he's a lovable character. But I'll tell you, he was with Brett LaSala's camp all week at um, Texas 2K. Every time I went by, he was polishing that thing. I'm telling you, that bitch was shining all the fucking time. Play the music if he comes. So the music for Turvy uh, is this. This is the music for Turvy when he does come in. (laughs) That's it, because the WWE likes to copyright my shit immediately. I have a TIG welder, and that is infinitely harder than stick welding. Turvy not, do not, will not finish that car. Bet me on that. He wants them big 395 front tires. We'll walk 10 to 10. He says, Turvy, what the fuck am I looking at? Dude, you have no idea how hilariously bad. And there are people like that. Street Alpha, there is a subculture of car builder that is delusional as fuck. I'm saying have no fucking skills. Think that they're the best. Like, I wish I had their confidence. You ever go to the beach and you're not feeling all confident about yourself? Now I'm fucking looking good, so watch out. But you're like, "Eh, I'm not feeling my man. I wish I was tighter. And there was some fat motherfucker with a Speedo and doesn't give a fuck. There are car guys that are like that, that have an absolute piece of shit that no, it's a piece of shit, but they swear to God, if I really put my mind to it, I could build anything better than the Grey Goose. Oh, gotcha. Riley Newfield says, Alex, my, I saw my uncle having oh, some tuning walls with a junk boost to three valve shocker. I know. And we talked a bit about wide bands, narrow bands, and I left confused. Can you make a video explaining this? Ugh, 
I mean, yes, but I, I, I love you. I don't care to explain the difference because we don't deal with narrow band. I deal with narrow band on the Corvette, but in terms of a, of a, in terms of a uh, tuning learning thing, I don't want to have to explain old shit. Why don't I just explain um, A9L computers? Why don't I just explain TPS, you know, uh, 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 adjustments? Uh, 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 why don't I just? Why don't I explain distributors? Why don't I explain carburetors? You know, it, it's just not something we deal with. <clears throat> Has Street Alpha seen the D mass intake? I think Street Alpha is a busy guy. And by the way, I met his girlfriend, lovely girl. You guys have a good thing going on there in terms of your pursuit of knowledge and your uh, and your ability, or at least your desire to travel to set up these interviews, set up all your equipment, and put a highlight on these people. You know, and um, these shops need to realize that Street Alpha is putting you on. Ain't nobody know who you are half the time, right? How many people on the Street Alpha podcast saw my bald ass and were like, who the fuck's this bitch? And then they were like, I just left a two and a half hour podcast that this motherfucker dropped so much knowledge on my shit that I have to follow him. And I gained over 1,500 new subscribers just based off of that Street Alpha stuff because I did nothing else different and it spiked way the hell up and it has to be because of that. So shops, before you hesitate, let's say Street Alpha wants to fuck with you. In terms of, that's a po by the way, for the kids, that's a positive. He wants to interview you. Don't make it difficult. He's putting you on. He's already established that platform. It's got a couple of hundred thousand um, subs. So it's already established. So just don't make life difficult. He's putting you on. Drop knowledge. And if you want to, let's just say, get compensated for that, it will come in the form of business. See, a lot of people think that upfront, so upfront moolah has to be, you know, and I'm not saying this is happening, but I suspect that upfront um, uh, compensation needs to be had when in actuality, the, the cumulative business comes after the fact. That podcast reached 100,000 views in seven days, and then it went from 100,000 to 117,000, like in two or three days. And my viewers just, my, my, my subs keep just keep going up because more people watch it, more people go, who is this guy? How do I follow him? And it just works that way. So don't stress the upfront compensation. It'll come in the form of more business. There's already videos comparing narrow bands to wide bands. Exactly. Go do that. I'm going to need a roll cage from that. Survey. Alex, sometimes even after a shower, I just don't feel fresh. What should I do, Theo? <laughs> and I feel bad for taking the air hammer to my car, clearancing the T56. Now, a lot of people on the T, someone uh, on my, um, on my uh, Patreon, by the way, the Patreon now has chats. That's right. If you go to Patreon on the application on the phone, I have now enabled chats. So I start a chat. And you guys could interact with each other on those chats. So if you're curious about the whole Patreon and what what other, <clears throat> um, let's just say, perks you have, you have the ability to talk to each other now. And you can communicate, you know, swap parts, wives, whatever you want to do. I don't care. But now you have the ability to interact with each other on the Patreon. And I'll hope, hopefully but get more chats up there, more subject matter so that you guys can interact. I put up a post of showing me everyone's their, their cars. Everyone has some badass rides. Everyone on the Patreon seems to have either 350, a badass Raptor, Corvettes, you name it. Everyone on the Patreon showed their cars and it was super cool to have that happen. And everyone put a face to a name. Patreon is lit right now. It's kind of crazy. The Street Alpha, <clears throat> that's Street Alpha for hosting a great interview. I appreciate the kind words, Alex. Street Alpha, <clears throat> not a lot of good people out there. This industry is full of shit. You seem to be one of the good ones, and I appreciate you very much. At Street Alpha, the d -mass is a new intake from PMAS that flows better than any intake out there. Don't believe me? Google elephant dick. <laughs> oh, Y'all be uh, touching weaves, wife swap. Exactly, exactly. So I think, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, I'm having a little trouble here with the, with the voice. So I think on on the, um, the, the, the Patreon stuff, someone asked if... Um, T56 swaps eventually are going to be something that's even more common. And I think a lot of people aren't aware of the Ben Calamer wrinkle. Uh, ben Calamer is going to, I think, start selling transmissions to Fat House, if I'm not mistaken. Like, I think Fat House is going, okay, to make a T56 work in a GT350, 
seems to be a bit, you know, it's expensive, don't get me wrong, and it's robust, but a lot of, I'm sure the customers that were used to the 3160 go, shit, I wish, I think it was a 3160, yeah, I think it's a 3160, or this 3610, Tremec 3160, I don't want to speak out of turn, yeah, the 6 speed 3160 for the GT350, they were used to that gear ratio. With the T56, you then have to potentially re-gear the car to make it feel good. You have to do a OSS conversion. You have to do a whole bunch of stuff to make it work. Whereas a Stage 3 from Ben Calamer, you have to do nothing. Upgrade the clutch, same shifter, same drive shaft, same cross member, save money. Customer still retains a favorable gear ratio, same case, win-win. So I think eventually T56s will be less um, of a viable swap and it'll be more of a race situation. I have a T56 in my car, the GT500, because the TR6060 is not something I want to deal with because of the remote-mounted shifter location. So Ben Calmer offered me a Billy Badass T56, and once I run my 8, I'm going to send it back to him and say, do whatever you want with it, but I want synchros on the next transmission if I'm going to do street stuff. Yeah. No, no, legit. I think, I think... Ben Calamer is going to work with Fat House on the 3160 front. In my, uh, that's what I heard. <clears throat> Daunting Fastback says, hey, Alex, I just want to say thank you for the tune on the Coyote swap. The PBH intake is much better. The other intake was only an 85 millimeter housing. Daunting Fastback, thank you so much. I'll, I'll tell everyone the story. So Daunting Fastback has a Gen 3 Mustang, Coyote swap. I send him a tune. The tune comes back super rich. And I go, uh, show me a picture of your cold air intake. And it looked very well built, but it looked small. Now, I could have tuned it and taken away about 20% and sent them on his way. But he would have suffered performance. So I asked him a very simple question that I ask a lot of the customers that I get at Lund Racing. Number one, are you willing to buy a part to make it better? And he's like, absolutely. I said, do me a favor. Call Power by the Hour. Tell them Alex sent you. Tell them you want a Gen 3 swap intake. So they send you a kit, a tube, a couple of couplers, and a 100 millimeter housing or high 90s that requires no extra tuning. And it flows exactly like a Gen 3. And the trims are within 1 or 2%. He installs it. I send him a tune. He is happy. I'll tell you another story. Tony... Vega Dudurian, whatever, he he um he does TikTok videos. And he has a Camaro, an Audi, and an ESS equipped Mustang. He goes to my gym. So I'm tuning his car. He goes to the dyno, and I notice the knock sensors are not happy at a 6,000 RPM hit. I go, let's let's hold hold up, hold up. Let me see your catch can setup. Now I'm on this catch can kick because I've gone through ring land failures. I've gone through issues. And I don't want the customer to go through the same thing I went through. A motor. That's, that's seven or 8000 bucks and a bunch of labor. So I said, are you willing to buy a part? Are you willing to buy a part? He goes, yeah. I go, show me your engine bay. Had a little tiny JLT catch can. And the other breather was stock going right into the intake. I go, you are not exhausting or evacuating the crankcase pressure enough, in my opinion. If you're willing to buy a, a, a UPR catch can. Two into one, they're in Lake Worth, they're open, go get it. Two into one, put it on your car, get back on the dyno. Absolutely. Does it in a day, gets back on the dyno. Again, we haven't done a full rip on the car yet. Gets on the dyno, does a third gear rip, a fuel pump is dead. I go, oh, your, your fuel pressure is dropping from 58 to 40 at 6,000 RPMs. Check your fuel pumps. He goes, damn it, one of my fuel pumps is bad. He goes, man, this thing is pissing me off. I go, this is normal, brother. This is how it works. I'd rather catch your car from, you know, tearing itself up <clears throat> than to just keep tuning, keep tuning. I want to make sure that your car is mechanically sound. So that car needed a new fuel pump and a, and a proper evacuating system for the catch can. And hopefully it gets back on the dyno and makes 900 horsepower and have him be a happy cat because it's a G3X with a 100 millimeter pulley. Shad Hoffman made damn near 980 with that setup. So I think this guy, uh, he's going to be well into the um, 900 range. I don't think it'll be much of an issue at all. So are you for sure going to go with the carbureted Coyote Twin Turbo? No, I don't know. Not 100%. <clears throat> so the more Lund develops stuff, the more Jake develops stuff, the, l 
I want to support, but I also want simplicity. I want simplicity. So as a good employee and friend, I want to support the people that support me. So if Jake's like, Alex, I got a 6R80 that's badass. Senior, junior, or have gone light years ahead of what anyone thought a stock computer could do in the last year. In the last year, there has been more developed on the Gen 2 platform by Lund Racing than any other platforms anywhere combined. I'm saying leaps and bounds. We went from 7.1s to 6.60s. We went from three gears to two gears. We, we, we still do drive-by-wire. We still do uh, VCT. We, we now are doing auxiliary stuff. So I'm like, that has been, huh, it's been so robust. It makes you go, I might just go Gen 2 control pack again, but turbo this time and see what a stock motor can do in a semi-light chassis that's semi-safe. And see, I know I can go sevens with a stock motor. I know it. It's just a matter of doing it. And again, I'm not looking to compete. I don't give a fuck about anybody else. I just want to go sevens with a stock motor. Stock bottom end, not stock motor, because it's going to be 321, right? It's going to be, or 322. It's going to be Gen 3 bottom end, Gen 2 heads, and a Gen 2 timing set. So I got to figure that out. <clears throat> Um, run a good clutch and you'll be straight Pacino performance. The issue the people complain about the MT82 are the exact same issue original T56 has had. Quiet kept. Got it. Uh, Toby still is Toby, exactly. Yes, they see he still has the DI and the DI is not an issue. And D and a half performance, by the way, right there. You see right there, guys? Those are two ET Street SS tires. 285, 35, 19. Kind of big, but I'm going to stuff them on the 19 by 9 Brembo wheels. And I'm gonna, I just wanna have them on there uh, because I wanna have grip. I didn't want the, I didn't want any other like Nitto G2 or anything like that. I wanted the ET Street SS because it's the same compound as an R tire. I wanna be able to have as much grip as possible while making the car look stock. So that's why I went with the ET Street SS. I ordered it Monday, they were at my door yesterday. So shout out to DNA High Performance. And I got a good deal on it. Um, <clears throat> Data and the diagnosis saved the man. I hope so. I think Toby would have same issue if it was a four system. I think it was a four system, wasn't it? Not 100%. I bought my closed UPR catch can like 45 minutes before you made the ventilated catch can vid. I understand, but uh, t if you're not making over 650 or 700 horsepower, I think you're okay. Think about it this way, guys. My GT500 did not have an open catch can when it was racing, running 8.1. Not, it didn't cause issues, but it didn't help. It received the open catch can after I got the motor back. And you see how much it choo-choo trains out the bitch. That reminds me. I The heads are done, so I have to get the bottom end over to L&M ASAP. And I just don't have any fucking time. It's crazy how, how little time I have after work. I'm like, I don't have time to go up there, put it on a pallet. And during work, I'm at work. I can't just take off time to at work. So, it's crazy. Are, and those are 6, uh, 12G shells. Yeah, these are... Um, the high brass situation, yeah, for the for the blick, just in case somebody wants to come in and, and get fucked up. But these, yeah, these are, I have like 12 of these around, just, when, when, when she goes down, put on the vest and just start loading shit. So, yeah, that's going to be fun. 285, 35, 19 is a 26.8 tire. Is that larger than stock? Um, slightly, slightly larger. Care to share the best wheel specs for S197 platform without rubbing like ride like to ride with my son in the car sometimes. Jose Quinones, what are you doing with the car? I like a on a on a 20 by 10 or a 19 by 10 wheel, a 305, 35, 19, or 20 looks great. I wouldn't really go much past that. But I'm not let's not start talking offsets and 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 width here. Uh, this is not that channel. I don't care. That's an autistic question, Jared. DNA says er, or any of our social media platforms. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. <clears throat> 3160 needs love. It's the manual in the dark horse. Going to be around for a while. Exactly. That's why Ben Calamer bought a 24 Mustang. Dad, he wants to trade in. He did the D4 development on the new one. I, I don't think he bought a dark horse, but I think he wants to buy a GT350. Uh, no, I think he, he bought a Mach 1. Ben Calamer owns a Mach 1 and a 24 Mustang. He buys the platforms that he fucks with. Ain't that a crazy concept? Buying the platform that you fuck with. So he's like, okay, I got the 3160 figured out. I got a G-Force gear set. So there is a 3160 G-Force gear set for Mach 1s and 350s, guys, and Dark Horses. So if you have a Dark Horse, Mach 1 or GT350, 
and you want a more robust transmission, Ben Calamer has it. Hit him up, Ben Calamer. Say, hey, Alex told me, and say Alex told me. Alex told me you have 3160 beefed up shit. I didn't know this. Hook me up, brother. We'll see what he can do. <clears throat> Those of the Riviera oh, stop us. Tell us your thoughts about that yellow Mustang. What yellow Mustang? Um, you're going to VMP on your you're going VMP on Gen 1, right? No, I don't want to support that company in any way, shape, or form because I'm not getting paid. I am at the point where if you want me to rep your shit, I need fucking money. And if you don't got money to give me to rep your shit, vaya con Dios. Gone are the days <clears throat> where you can give me a control arm and I rep your shit in perpetuity. Those days are long gone. This is a serious fucking channel. And if you don't, and I invest in the channel, seeing that the platforms that I have. So if you're going to go, hey, here's a control arm, rep us forever. Uh uh. Fuck that. You got to give me monthly nut. Hey, yo. Alex said you got to give him monthly nut. He's gay. Calamar started working on Build 3160s last year, I think. I wonder if the owner of On3 owns a Mustang with an On3 kit. I don't know. That'd be in. No, he's got a, a Milli, Richard Milli, and a Performante. Like, that fucking matters. Could you imagine being a woman and being impressed by that? Could you imagine being a being a girl and going, oh, my God, you got a Richard Milley in a... You must have a lot of debt. That's what I would say. Um, <clears throat> I've been to Calamar shop a few months ago and seen some of his cars. He's legit. Street Speed Yellow Mustang. Yeah, I don't... Guys, he's irrelevant in the Mustang game. He's an influencer. That car's probably going to get a Whipple and then get given away. So... He is not a Mustang guy. He is not a guy to go to for Mustang knowledge. He is just a guy that influences, sells products, does giveaways, and just gives you kind of inform general information. But when it comes to nitty gritty stuff, the guy's not. The guy's not like I wouldn't look at the channel and try to learn something from that channel. <clears throat> um, Alex Hennessy Blow by Racing or PBD? Who do you recommend for tuning and repairs? <laughs> uh, Jeremiah Camp, what's up, Jeremiah Camp? Joe Swiss says, it's making me consider a 3160 swap if I get a Coyote Mustang. Not going to lie. If the gear stack is so good, it's a shame it can't hold more than 450 wheel stock, guys. I think a 3160 Ben Calmer Stage 3 transmission can hold 1,000. The proper clutch. It's got a beefed up gear set. It's a favorable gear stack. That 3160 transmission, it's currently being used in cars right now, a.k.a. the Dark Horse and old Mach 1s and 350s. So you have three platforms where that transmission was introduced in and Ben Calamer can probably live off of that for a fucking long time. Any word on the actual bottom heads, bottom end and the heads of the Dark Horse? I know I know Predator Rods, but what else? Is that the low-key Roadrunner replacement? I no idea. No fun. I'm not that guy. I'm not that guy. When they become tunable, AJ, I will give two fucks. They are not tunable, so that means they are undesirable. Remember how many people tried to jump on the C8 bandwagon before they were tunable? They were giving you three PSI twin turbo kits for $25,000. Could you fucking imagine? Could you fucking imagine right now that you paid twenty five grand for a three or six PSI turbo kit limited to 6,000 RPMs because there was no tuning available? You fucking idiot. So that's the same way I treat the Mustang. If you can't do night, if you can't do turbo shit, if you can't do centrifugal shit, if you can't do E85 and a bigger than what, a 52 pound injector, that fucking kit doesn't matter. Um, you need the monthly diddly. What about stank mode? Again, again, again. Sorry if you said before, but what's the plan for the for FI on the Gen One SCT? The Gen One is gonna go probably 1150s or 1140s NA. That's the goal because I'm gonna do a converter, suspension. Um, E85, a cold air, maybe a manifold. That's it, right? And the, and headers. So that'll probably run 11.4, 11.5. And then it's going to get a Roush 2.3 liter TVS on it. And that Roush 2.3 liter TVS, I am going to go pump gas, 52s in a bat. And then see see if I can go 10.60s or so with it. I'll use race gas or Sunoco 260. I'm not going to use Octane Booster. I will tell you it is race gas. I don't want brown plugs. And then after I've gone as far as I can go on race gas, we'll do oil pump gears because we're going to pull it down eventually and get up there in the RPM range. Oil pump gears, um, maybe a oil pump gear crank, crank sprocket. Stay on, nah, stay on the stock cams and then pull it down an E85 the sucker. And the goal with that car, with a Roush 2.3 TVS, is to go what Donnie did back in the day, low nines. 
eventually, I think it'll need comp camp stage threes to relieve some of the pressure. But I'm going to take everything I've learned from Donnie's car and everything I've learned from our customers and put it onto this car. And once the car runs the number that I think it should run, it, it, it'll have a built rear end. It'll have a TIG Vision anti-roll bar. It'll have Vikings front and rear, but it'll look stock. He's sleeping, brother. Mendoza Coyote, Tony's sleeping. What's up, Alex? Thanks for the content. The Midnight White Fox, thank you very much. Um, Aries, sick, gave me 10 bucks. Thank you so much. I like money. Money is always nice. Um, already has a Whipple, but has nine, uh, already has a Whipple, but has 900 horsepower somehow. Hey, I think I saw you cruising the Gen 1 in Mexico West the other day. It's nice to see a clean Gen 1. Jeremiah, don't you see a Gen 1 with Brembo's? And you go, holy shit, look at that. Isn't that crazy? It's only 2024, but when you see a stock Gen 1 on Brembo's with no modifications, you go, oh shit, look at that thing. Like, I look at him and I go, that's ah, a clean car. That's how I want the car to stay. I don't think I'm going to be able to go 9-1 with Brembo's. You know, I think I'm going to need a drag pack at the track. But the car is going to look like it currently looks forever. I am not going to modify the exterior at all. Maybe some tint because it's Florida. That's it, Jeremiah. And I love the fact that this thing just gets down, does what it does. I'm not going to ride around on bigs and littles. Fuck all that. It's going to ride around on Brembo's with ET Suite SS's. And if I want to party, I'll party on a stock wheel setup. Then the Sage 3 MT82 lose a little favorability in the gear stack with the GeForce gear set, or was Calamar able to keep the tight ratios in the 3160? Okay, because in order to make something stronger, you kind of have to make it bigger. So if it's bigger, then it has to change gear ratio wise. You can't, you probably can, but typically when you make something bigger and more robust and beefier, you can't keep it in terms of gear ratio the same. So you're going to have to live with a slightly different gear stack. I want to see a Whipple 93 S650 on an independent dyno. I don't trust PBD. Um, <clears throat> you know, that is an interesting point. Have there been any other? Oh, yeah, VMP dyno. But that's another un... That's another dyno that's like out to lunch. The VMP dyno supposedly made 1,000 on a Gen 3 back in the day. And that was called uh, Spike Gate. Or blip gate. That was a very interesting time. If you want, if you were around for that shit. Park Performer says just finishing up at the shop, dropping in to say hi. What's up, Alex? Chat. I'll listen on my way home. <clears throat> yeah. So you're gonna get the zero one or get it shipped home. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get it shipped home. <clears throat> what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna coordinate with the Fairmont uh, shop once that car is done and Ben Calamer is done because Ben Calamer had to buy a whole bunch of parts for the zero one input shaft deal. Uh, the couplers on the uh, torque tube are fucking wiped out. There is a bit of an issue with the um, slave cylinder um, in terms of measurement because it's RPS stuff. So he has to get that measurement proper. So it'll be a little while before I get the Corvette back, which is good because if I can coordinate both cars coming down at the same time, that would save me money. Hello, hello. Cat Daddy finally made it, says <laughs> Pondo Bird. Battle of the Gen 1s when you get boost on the Gen 1. Alex, that would be great, Nixon Tarpia. I would love to get Nixon Tarpia and Jeremiah Camp lined up. They both have stick shift Gen 1 cars. Jeremiah Camp has a Paxton Gen 1 car. Nixon Tarpia has a TVS Gen 3, almost nine second car. Stick shift, okay? On a twin 60 millimeter throttle body. Like, it's crazy, the setup. And it'd be cool to do roll and dig stuff. You know, we could go to Mexico, and I'd love to um, just get a bunch of GoPros, put them on both cars, and fuck around. But we'd have to be careful because, you know, Mexico doesn't fuck around nowadays, and they take your car now. Unless we all go to Bradenton and do it the right way. Roster 3, you don't mean a 2-3 with a YDBT logo? Probably. Just asking if any actually, if anyone actually pulled apart and figured out what's in that thing. Is it a... Uh, nobody, nobody, no, nobody gives a fuck unless it's tunable, bro. Nobody cares if it's tunable. Unless it's tunable. Like, a lot of people, I remember... On the Gen 2, or late Gen 1, I got a Gen 2 motor, I got a Gen 2 motor, I got a Gen 2 motor. No, it was basically an F-150 Gen 2 design cylinder head. It wasn't like some Billy Badass Gen 2 motor in your car. And it wasn't able to hold more power. People thought they were, but they weren't. They does, Some came with different cylinder heads, but it's basically, in my opinion, <clears throat> a F-150 variant of the gen 2 cylinder head than the mustang one so a lot of people are losing their minds i don't give a fuck what motor is in the dark horse when it's tunable i will give a fuck it's not tunable i don't give a fuck i don't give a fuck 
Jeremiah Camp says, I'm down for digs and rolls. Got it. You're going to fuck us up on a roll because you got that Paxson and that fucking thing steamrolls up top. It's crazy. Um, Alex, did Jake sell the dino? Yes, it's gone. Bye-bye. No more dino. I have no access to the dino. So I'll give you the story of the dino. He offered it to me for sale for a long time. And I, I was like, you want a down payment or, not, or something? He's like, no, it's yours if you want it. Okay, cool. Then I, I went to three places and I tried to get a lease in three different places. Three different times, I was hosed over on that lease. I told them what I was going to do. I told them my plans. I told them this is a personal, this is not a business. This is just my shit. If I make noise, it's at night. They were all cool with it. Two got leased out from under me. And then the prices skyrocketed. It went from a $1,500 a month to a $3,000 a month to a $5,000. I cannot get anything under $5,000 a month in Palm Beach County. See, a lot of people are not aware that I live in Palm Beach County. It is probably the most expensive expensive county to do anything in the United States. Oh, why don't you move? Okay, so pick up my whole life and go somewhere else so I can save a thousand bucks a month? Stop it. Um, Crassus says, hey, Alex, I was going to put a Gen 3 Illuminator in my 18 GT soon. <clears throat> Currently on an ESX G3S, would you recommend DSG Performance? I don't know them. So I, I apologize, Crassus. I don't know them uh, at all. I'm not saying they're good or bad. I just don't know them. What kind of money will you have in your Gen 1 to run mid-11s? I'm going to document that. Right now, I have nothing in it but a tune. So I'm going to document what it took for me to go 12.8, and it was a tune. Now that I have tires, I'm going to go out there on a tune and go, let's see with grip if I gain anything. I have to dial in the tune, pump, gas. So the next video is probably going to be with grip, pump gas versus race gas. So I'm going to go ahead and get pump gas in, you know, get the tires on, run it on pump gas in Mexico, and then try to drain it all by end of day or something, or maybe go out there with about a eighth tank of fuel. The thing is very fuel efficient. So I'm kind of blown away where people complain about fuel economy on a stock car. This thing gets like fucking 26 miles a gallon on the highway. So I'm kind of blown away that people say, I don't know to, and all of a sudden my car gets two miles a gallon. I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. This fucking thing gets 28. It's annoying because I need to get rid of it to get race gas in it. So tires, pump gas, drag, go out there. Or have a tank of, of, have five gallons ready to go of race gas, 260 GT, go out there, add some timing to it, and see if it makes a difference. And then, once the PMAS comes in, I'll do a similar test on 93 Octane stock tune versus uh, PMAS, stock tune with a PMAS. Meaning stock tune, only thing the only thing fucked with is the PMAS math curve. Then do a LUN tune with the PMAS and see what the big, what the, what the delta is. Samut says, got one in the driveway, and I still feel the same about the Dark Horse. It it will still, it will sit until it is tunable. Very smart man. <clears throat> uh, move to California. Fuck that. GT500, Zero One, Fox, Hush, S197, tuning Lund cars daily, plus the live video edits and then Texas 2K. Alex got that five-star project manager award. Salute. AJ, you got to understand, a lot of people make fun of the fact that I'm, oh, you're poor, you live in a 1-1, one, one, da, 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 yeah, whatever. What you just posted is... My everyday. I have all those cars that I have to worry about, fuck with, build, tune, video, to, while trying to have a personal life, and I work a full-time job at Lund Racing. Patina Performance says, my pops used to have a uh, small shop off North Lake when I was younger, when he was flipping used cars. Almost impossible to find a shop that isn't outrageous in price. D Wall says, I know you've mentioned it before, Alex, but can you explain to me like a layman why a Coyote makes more power, more horsepower than Torque? Or can anyone here explain? Well, why does a Honda make more horsepower than torque? Why does a big block make more torque than horsepower? It's the engine design. Think of the Coyote as two K-series engines bolted together. That's all it is. So a big block with a certain cam profile is going to make 300 horsepower, 450 pound-feet of torque. The Coyote is 5 liters. It is small in displacement. It has the ability to rev over 7,500 RPMs stock. So the way it makes its horsepower is with RPM, cam profile, and airflow, not displacement. The larger the engine, generally, the more torque it makes. Imagine this. Let's say you're in this room, and this room has an engine that can fill it. Let's say there's an engine the size of this room. 
That engine, being the size of this room, theoretically, if the transmission and differential is geared correctly, one rotation of the flywheel should allow that car to go all the way down the quarter mile. Do you know what I'm saying? It is so big in displacement, it makes so much torque that in theory, if geared correctly, an engine the size of this room with a flywheel as big as, you know, my, ha my house, one rotation of it should allow the car to go down the quarter mile if geared correctly. Now you have an engine that's a quarter of that size. Well, it needs many more rotations of that same fl of the flywheel to get it down the quarter mile because it makes less torque. I hope that in terms of a visualizing it helps you understand that how size and torque correlate. For example, let's say I have a long dick. It's long as hell. All I need is one stroke from that motherfucker to do a lot of damage. Right? But when you got a three inch Peter, you got to constantly get that thing in and out of there to do any damage. So, big hog, one long stroke can probably do a lot of damage. A little tiny hog, three incher, you need to flick it back and forth like a bean to, to even feel it. <laughs> Maybe that helps. Oh, Alex is so stupid. Oh, and then I do the, you know, the cock reference. I totally get it. <laughs> Butter boobs, butts all day. So Coyote has VTech, basically. Um, efficient head flowing with big cams to add to AJ. He also helps us Patreon members with questions and issues. Yeah, I mean, I have a full-time, full-time job. I'm back. What did I miss? I know I'm behind in the chat, but have you seen any issue with four fuel systems lately in the ticket system? I've seen guys saying pumps are failings. failing. Pumps fail, but not necessarily um, the fuel system fails. The pumps are the pumps. The fuel system is totally different. Street Alpha, that's what I do well. Remember when we were talking and I was talk I was trying to give you examples of things? I think that's what I do well is explain things to the layman. And once I gave you the the, the once I gave you the, the penis analogy, a lot of you guys, oh, I totally get it. A flywheel as big as an elephant, dick. No replacement for displacement was the old saying. A Alex, any car updates? Bro, are you fucking serious? D do you not listen to all the chats, bro? Holy shit. Did Alex just say he lives in a house? <laughs> it, all make, <clears throat> it all makes sense now. Um, <laughs> that room has a warp core breach in progress. Tell Jordy to lunge to the dilithium crystals. <laughs> How big is it really? Your LR clock. <laughs> what is happening? Uh, Dave says, don't forget... Though, guys, horsepower is a fixed number. Torque is times 50 to 50. So a big block Chevy or a big block Hawk with street heads and camshaft probably doesn't make zero, probably doesn't make zero more torque than a Coyote if they were both to spin at 7,500 RPM. Hey, man, three inches at 100 miles an hour is a lot for somebody. Pumps have nothing to do with four exactly. The pumps are not made by four. The pumps are TI or whatever, right? Who makes the, who makes the pumps TI pumps? Yeah, TI. TI Automotive Aftermarket is is the are the people that makes the pumps. So don't 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 trip about don't trip about four innovations when the people that actually make the fuel pump is TI Automotive. Please tell me you fucking knew that. Uh, that that uh, how can I get this game? Uh, it's okay. It's okay, guys. I'm here. Uncle Alex is here to help you decompile everything that's happening. Um, no, sorry, I have a life. <laughs> and now he, make, <clears throat> he makes it seem like it's my fault. Um, then go, when you have time, go backwards a, a, a couple of videos and I'll give you, a, there's a car update. Uh, this is a car channel. So what you're saying is Diddley was rolling out at high RPM. Oh, 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 yeah, listen to the RPM. Uh, 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 oh shit, N-word. Wait. Oh, 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 oh. I think he was doing about like, fuck, that's like 400 pumps an hour. All right. <clears throat> I mean a minute. Like pumps per minute. PPM? <laughs> Could you imagine? You have to, you can actually do the math. When Meek was getting his cheeks clapped as to the RPM or the PPM of Diddy. Crazy stuff. 
Tia Automotive, holy moly, gee whiz. Alex, what do you think about the new 6A liter Mustang? D-Rock here, I got you. GT500 needs a motor ship to L&M. Fox hasn't had time to fucks with, exactly. Besides car meat, gray car, got tires. Zero one still with Ben Cal and Hush still getting fab work. Thank you. Can you explain how torque converter works by using a cock analogy? <laughs> oh, fuck. Again, if you go on YouTube and type in how torque converters work, there are great, great videos on that, but I cannot use it with analogy. Isn't that from Pulp Fiction? Isn't that clip from Pulp Fiction? I don't know what you're talking about. <clears throat> and I work 54 hours a week. Oh, I'm sorry. I kind of, <laughs> I think I worked double that. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Now he's like, and I work 54 hours a week. Then catch up on the videos. Alex, are you going to have Alec of LMP on here again? I don't know. He's busy, dude. He, this is race season for him. When shops like that enter race season, they are stressed out. They do nothing but race all, all year. All they fucks with is race car shit. So I'm not going to bother him. He's probably stressed out right now. I'm watching it work and Meek getting blown out played. I died. Elva Galaga, sorry, VTech. I'm sorry I'm not a gay Honda guy. I'm a gay Coyote guy. Detwork 400 is better than a two. No, it's not. No, it's not. Let's talk about the Deechworks 400 pump. Hmm? <clears throat> the Deechworks 400 pump has had so many issues in my ticket system that it is not even funny that I am now saying, did you buy a Deechworks 400 pump? Because it looks like pressure is dropping. This is why. I think they have an integrated check valve and the integrated check valve cuts down on the flow. So... If you are experiencing fuel delivery issues, I don't think a Detrux 400 is an upgrade with an integrated check valve. Sorry, I'm not here to poo-poo shit. So if you want more fuel delivery, put a booster pump on your stock pump. And I think that's better than upgrading to a Detrux 400. It is horrible. It is not good. Exactly. Thank you, Mofler. We have had so many issues. We're like, hey, you have fuel supply issues. Okay. Then they come back. They go, hey, I got a new pump. What'd you get? A Detroit 400. It's worse. What do you mean it's worse? It's got an integrated check valve. So it looks like it's cutting down on the flow. Oh, that's fucked up. Yeah. So it, yeah, Detroit 400 is not a good pump. Sorry. I, I don't care if Detroit get mad at me. I'm simply going well by what I see in the ticket system. And I'm trying to prevent you from buying something that is not solving your fuel supply issues. Driving for Answers channel has great explanations. Worse than a stock pump. Listen up, Alex. Gonna learn something. Don't flame me. Who needs a woman when you have great content and awesome cars? Well, I mean, look. I mean, you need to get cooking. I need someone to cook, you know? I mean, honestly, you're right. You can get pussy anywhere. But I don't know. It is nice to have someone that like literally like supports your shit. The girls I've ended up with, they support your shit for a little while, and then they're like, "I want to do my own thing," and I'm like, "Then go do your own thing." I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not. I don't want to be involved. Um, I had Detroit 400, and it was randomly dropping my fuel pressure to two psi. Nearly cost me my motorcycle crashes. Thank God, whoever's tuning me at Lund caught that. Probably Brandon. Brandon seems to be the Detroit 400 whisperer. Funeral for glass roof after the show. It's E. Bison. We're all gay since we need to play with shafts to make power. Hey, yo, I wanted to buy a Whipple kit for my Gen 3. Thanks for the bad news. <laughs> what did I say about the bad news? I think Whipple's fine. Oh, man. Jesus. What's going on with people? Deets work equals doesn't work. <laughs> Why did Deets works get shrapnel here? I don't dislike the guys at Deets works. I actually kind of like them. It's just that Deets works 400. Maybe they put it on their test benches. They're like, look at this. It works great. Makes a bunch of power. Flows great. Put it in the car. Fuel pressure drops. I'm like, there you go. Hello, Lund. It's Deechworks calling. If you ain't railing your wife with Alex in the background, are you really supporting the channel? Wow, weird. Like, do I? <laughs> Does your wife come when I talk? Because that's, you might not be doing the work there. You know what I'm saying? Oh, it comes with a Deechworks pump? Oh, my God. Who? Wait a minute. Whipple kits don't come with a Deechworks pump. David Gonzalez? Somebody must be selling that kit with a Deechworks pump. Wait a minute. Now I got to go see. Where would I go? That's a DNA Hot Performance. DNA Hot Performance, you're on. Does the Whipple kit come with a Deechworks pump? 
No, thanks. You heard about that new Australian fuel system that released for the SI50s? No, I did not. Every man wants their own personal cheerleader and sleut. That's the gay military talk. Now we got to have it on mute, sadly. Oh, gotcha. Um, and thank you very much, RC Connection, for the money. Thank you so much. Imagine if Teeks were due to feedback to improve the product, probably just call Senior and cry like the rest. No. I think Teachworks is open to criticism. How do you how do you make your product better? Unless the people that deal with your product criticize the product in order to help you get better. If you don't listen to criticism, look, I listen to criticism. I I see all every single comment said about me. I see it and I don't get mad about it. Sometimes people make sense. Sometimes people make a point. Okay, maybe I should do this. Maybe I shouldn't do that. Maybe I should be a little more lighthearted. Da 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 da. You know. So I I tweak the show and the delivery based on the feedback because you guys are the feedback. And even even if the haters say some dumb shit, you got to take that under some kind of. You got to have a feedback loop, and that is your feedback loop. You put things out there, and the people come back because let's be honest, I'm here to make money. Right, I am doing this to make money, to then make the cards go faster so you can learn something and I can buy cool shit. At the end of the day, this is a money-making venture so that I can buy more cars and get you more content. That's all. That So the feedback loop has to, has to be received with even negative comments so that you can at least make your product better. I would like to think that DeachWorks is open to criticism. Feedback is really important. It absolutely, you work for FIC. Nixon Tarpio does the best thing of like, he improves the product at FIC. He heard about the issues with the FIC 1000H with startup, developed the 1200, I think, D, and we vetted it on his vehicle. The thing was on the money, and we used his data. That's right. Nick Santarpia's data was used on the 1200 he d helped develop, and it was perfect. So now we have a tune in at Lund Racing that... We can say this was vetted on a car with a return soft fuel system on pump gas and the 85. See you later. And it worked flawlessly because he was open to criticism. Just shedding some love for all the great content. Just shedding some love for all the great content. Says it twice. Alex, do the cam video for the whiteboard, please. If I know you're busy, do the cam video for the whiteboard. I, I gotcha. I'll try. Wibble is very popular for the Coyote stuff. Good route to go with 5.4 as well. Yes. Um, so... The 5.4, which one? SVT, chop up. Are you talking about the 5.4, like, uh, okay, yeah, the GT500 5.4, not, not the 32-valve stupid thing. So the Whipple 3-liter, the rear-feed 3-liter is fine. I don't think you need the 4.5, 4.5-liter Whipple like I have. I don't think you need a 3.8. I think a 3-liter Gen... Five or Gen, I forget the rotor pack, but there's like a Gen Five or Gen Three or something like that. That's more than you need for that car. That uh, a stock GT500 at 850 rural horsepower starts to bend the fucking rod. So there's no need. There's no need to go any higher than that. Honestly, on a stock car, if you're gonna make big boy power, you got the Gen Three TVS, which Senior has made 1,200 horsepower on. You got the four and a half liter Whipple, like I have, and that has made over 1,300 horsepower in certain combinations. Not mine. So. There's plenty of uh, blowers uh, selections out there to fit your needs. Most companies, too emotional. Let's just say I was Barack Bunny, okay? FIC 1440s are the best injector for 93 and 85. Ah! Ah! If anyone knows, Dietrichworks used to not even be considered in domestic platforms. They do seem to be slowly improving their products. Um, companies should be calling London begging for feedback on product design or better yet, paying. Bro, it's ego. It's ego. Imagine you have Lund Racing, a company that the moment you get the seal of approval from that company, you will do better. The moment you ask that company to vet a product, your product will sell for the simple fact that we say, we recommend it. Lund Racing recommends blah, blah, blah product. Why? Because we vetted it. They gave it to us. We put it on our own vehicles. We saw the gains, but what happens is ego. A lot of these companies have a big fucking ego and they think they know better than the people that actually tune the platform and see data all day, every day. So if companies were smart, 
they'd go to Lund directly if they want to sell to the Ford platform. But no, what happens? Ego. There's egos. Company owners say we suck and, you know, we're too... Like, imagine you're a company and you develop, let's say, a fuel pump, right? And you, you think you know everything about fuel pumps, right? You give one to Lund Racing. Lund Racing goes, this sucks. And this is why this sucks. You, having an ego, goes, fuck you. I know more about pumps. I've been building pumps before you when you wet behind the ears. And we're like, we don't give a fuck. Here's the data. And you go, ah, something must be wrong. It must be your tuning. And you hard-headedly keep selling the product. More issues and more issues and more issues. And finally, you get the worst possible thing that happens to your product. Lund Racing says, we do not support this product. Now, you say, well, this guy does it, this guy does this, and then they hammer the math curve, hammer the speed density to make up for the fact, hammer the voltage tables to make up for the fact that the pump is not putting anything out more than the stock one is. Instead of you having an ego about it, why didn't you fix it? And again, I'm not saying this actually happened. This is 100% an example, seriously. So get the ego out. If you want a product to go to the Ford market, you go to Lund, you pay them to vet the product. Once the product is vetted and Lund says, we like this, you then put it out to the market and Lund will never say, hey, we don't recommend this because we vetted it. Stop it. Thank you, sir, for your knowledge. One of one RTR. Thank you so much. And SVC Chapa gave me five bucks. Thank you so much. I only have 1050Xs. Womp womp. I would like to see the Gen 6 Whipple on the Gen 3 car to see if the blower and Gen 4 motor are the variables allowing the Gen 4 to seemingly make more power. Exactly. Let's put a Gen 6 Whipple on a Gen 3 car. Let's fucking go. <clears throat> I have the best part-time for LGBTQ member in the army. Got it. There are... There are enough Aussies out there. They're fucking with 4 5 4 so finding power adders work is hard. Would you consider rating and critiquing our build in the end of the show like Bumble Swipes? Could be hilarious. Could be. But I'd have to find something funny. Never understood why people get pressed for criticism like bro criticism makes you better. Bledsoe said it best. He started making parts because manufacturers didn't like hearing the criticism. And Max Outlaw, thank you for becoming a Bicho level member. Max Outlaw, lawyer, sorry. I said Max, Max Outlaw. Uh, I, it is Max Outlaw, I just to have the ER. So he's right. Imagine um, Alec Bledsoe says, hey, I think that um, your lid sucks, so it should have this. And the lid guy goes, oh, yeah? Well, this guy went to, uh, tens with our lid. Oh, cool. We're in the eight-second world. Well, uh, they didn't have issues. Hey, they're trying to make your product better. Instead of making a competing product, and they go out and make a competing product, makes more power, now there's another lid on the market. And there goes your market share. Critique the platform. Cr critic the Patreon. Holy shit, Alfredo Diaz. Did you have a fucking stroke in the middle of that? Did you have a stroke in the middle? Of critic the Patreon member rides. <laughs> I can't do it here because the chat is not available on the web. The chat is available only on on um the app so look i'll show you the app where the fuck is it um, there we go oh look at this <clears throat> so this is the ydbt chat on patreon and everyone is showing their rides look at that oh i love it guys i love the engagement look at the fucking cage on this guy's car who the fuck is this tristan mazone look at tristan's car tristan mazone they're fucking caged up and shit. Look at that. So this is on Patreon. If you're a Patreon member, you have access to this chat. You can put your car in the in the in the pics. Let me go all the way to the bottom. Look at all that. Look at all the fucking cars y'all posted. Oh, I posted my Corvette up first. I said post up your rides, and boom, everyone posted their shit. Look at that. Great thread started this morning. Everyone's having a good old time, uh, sharing dick pics and everything. It's a good time. Five point ho. That's a nice ride, brother. It looks good. Orange on black. Gotta love it. VP went nine with their lid. <laughs> ah. You know how mad you'd have to be if you were repping Whipple forever and then they just made a lid for someone else? Shit products should be criticized. The Diddy Meek sound clip is your best sound clip. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh.
like is that like a pain or is that like a enjoyment i don't even want to analyze that 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 screaming he's doing <laughs> It's funny as fuck, though. All right, guys, I'm going to get out of here. It's 930. That's right. We're getting the fuck out of here. I'll be back on Sunday, 8 p.m., Peasant Chat Prime Time, because I want more people to be on. So Peasant Chat Prime Peasant Chat Prime Time. I'm going to do my best to get these tires mounted on the S197 and get your videos on that. If not, I'll try to get nitrous hits on the Fox Body. That's the plan for the next video coming up. Nitrous hit on the Fox Body, but something tells me that bitch is not going to hook. It doesn't hook now, N.A. I can't imagine it's going to hook. With a nitrous kit, I might have to bolt on the bias plies and go out there, make a hit. And if it survives, do a 60 to 130. And if it goes low sixes, high five, 60 to 130, this bitch is well into the nines if I can get it to 60 foot. Have a great rest of your Thursday. I will see the rest of you guys and the peasants back on, on Sunday, 8 p.m. prime time. Enjoy your weekend. Thanks for hanging out with me for a little while. I will see you guys on Sunday. See you later. Bye-bye.